हेलो एवरीवन नमस्ते वेलकम टू माय चैनल स्टडी विद अमित सिंह इन आवर प्रीवियस वीडियो वी हैव लर्न हाउ वी कैन स्विच टू केवाईसी एमएल प्रोफाइल एंड व्हाट इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट वी नीड टू कीप आवर कीप इन आवर माइंड व्हाइल इन ट्रांजिशन पीरियड वी हैव डिस्कस्ड डे टू डे एक्टिविटी ऑफ ट्रांजैक्शन मॉनिटरिंग एंड लिस्ट केवाईसी एंड लिस्ट व्हाट आर द बेसिक डिफरेंस बिटवीन केवाईसी एंड एमएल basics of uh, FATF Palermo convention and we have discussed some of the case study on this in today video we will discuss how money launder use bank and other depository institution to launder the money and discuss the case study on every method so that you can understand uh, these terms very easily I'll cover this session in two parts so please ring the notification bell so you don't miss an update but before that if you did not subscribe the channel yet then please subscribe it and hit the like button if you like the content Let's start with electronic transfer of funds An electronic transfer of funds is a transfer of fund that is initiated by electronic means such as internet based transfer an automated clearing house ach an automated teller machine atm mobile phones and other devices electronic fund transfer can happen within a country and across borders trillion of dollars and trans uh, are transferred in millions of transaction each day because it is one of the fastest way to move money system such as us federal reserve wire network fedwire society for worldwide interbank financial telecommunications swift and the chip uh, clearing house interbank payment system moves millions of wires and transfers messages daily as such illicit fund transfer can be easily hidden among the million of legitimate transfer that occur each day For example money launder might initiate unauthorized domestic or international electronic transfer of funds such as ACS debit or cash advances on the stolen credit card and place the fund into an account established to receive the transfer Another example is stealing credit card and using the fund to purchase merchant merchandise that can be resold to provide the criminal with cash to avoid detection at any stage money launderer can take basic precautions such as varying the amount keeping the transfer relatively small and under reporting threshold and when possible using the reputable organizations to process uh, to process and place to verify electronic fund transfer Uh, have been tightened so transaction monitoring software providers have developed sophisticated Uh, algorithm to help detect and trigger alerts that might indicate uh, money laundering uh, or other suspicious activity using electronic transfer of fund however no system is full proof so these are the some uh, indicator where money launder money launder can use electronic fund transfer which are fund transfer occur to of uh, from a financial secrecy haven or high risk geographic location without an apparent business reason or when the activity is inconsistent with the customer business or history large incoming fund transfer are received on behalf of foreign clients with little or no explanation or apparent reason checks and money loan um, uh, money orders are used to receive many small incoming transfer of fund or to make deposits upon credit to the account all or most of the transfer or deposit are wired to another account in a different geographic location in manner inconsistent with the customer business or history fund activity for, uh, is an explained repetitive or level reveals unusual patterns pattern uh, payment or received are received that uh, that have no apparent link to legitimate contract good or services fund transfer is sent or received from the same person to or from a different accounts let's discuss rdc remote deposit cap capture <coughs> remote deposit capture rdc is a product offered by a bank that allows 
customer to scan a check and transmit an electronic image to the bank for deposit. This product offer increased convenience for customer because they are no longer need to make a trip to the bank or an ATM to deposit checks. It is a common for bank to allow individual to deposit photos of checks taken with a mobile phone. RDC decreases the cost to uh, cost to process check for a bank and is a part of a gradual transition away from a paper based transactions. RDC is also increasingly used in correspondent banking because it is streamlines in the deposit and clearing process. Deposit uh, correspondent bank is the provision of banking services by one bank to another bank. Let's discuss the risk of uh, RDC. The convenience provided by RDC can abused by money launderer because they no longer need to go in the bank and risk detection. Money launderer who have RDC capabilities can move checks with ease through an account and possibly set up multiple imaging devices. To control the risk associated with RDC, effort must be made to integrate RDC processing into other controls such as monitoring and fraud prevention systems. Let's discuss correspondent banking. Correspondent banking is an agreement whereby one bank acts as the agent of another bank in foreign country. A local or respondent bank bank has customer who want banking service in a foreign country so it contracts with a foreign correspondent bank to provide those services. The indirect nature of correspondent banking relationships means that the correspondent bank provides services for individual and entities for which it has neither verified the identities nor obtained any first hand, uh, first hand knowledge the amount of money that flows through the correspondent account that can pose a significant threat. Because the correspondent possesses large volume of transaction for the respondent customers. The correspondent banking is vulnerable to financial crime especially because the correspondent bank do not know the customers of the respondent directly and rely on the respondent bank's internal controls. In addition, less information is available to help the correspondent recognize suspicious activities. The risk of correspondent banking include correspondent does not or cannot conduct typical due diligence to know the customer of respondent. Know your customer. The correspondent does not have data on respondent transaction that typically enable transaction monitoring to control to identify unusual patterns. The correspondent can identify the respondent regulators but not always the degree of supervision to which the respondent is subject. The correspondent might have limited information on the respondent's anti-financial crime control perhaps through a questionnaire yet still needs to rely on the respondent to have and use sufficient effective controls on its customers. Some respondent are themselves correspondents to the third bank a practice called nesting. Nested account further shield correspondent banking from knowing the parties involved. Let's understand with the case. In July 2020, the New York State Department of uh, Financial Services DFS issued Dosh Bank AG, its New York branch and Dosh Bank Trust Company Americas collectively Dosh Bank a $150 million penalty. penalty. Dodge Bank internal compliance control had flagged concern with FBME as early as 2005 and with the Dodge Bank Estonia from the start of relationship in 2007. However, these identified risks did not address timely. In 2005, Dodge Bank rated FBME Bank as a high risk. I yet Dodge Bank identified 826 suspicious transactions associated with FBME Bank after that rating. FBME Bank declined the response to Dosh Bank queries regarding the ultimate beneficiary owners of FBME Bank's corporate client. In one instance, the US authority determined that 
the UBO was a Russian business uh, man associated with a Syrian military research and development organization. Deutsche Bank exited the relationship in 2014 after the Financial Crime uh, Enforcement Network mandated all bank in the US to seize relationship with the bank. Over a 150 billion uh, was routed from Danske Bank Estonia through Deutsche Bank. Deutsche Bank identified 340 suspicious transactions linked to Danske Bank Estonia US correspondent account with Deutsche Bank. The key takeaway from this case are Senior management support is essential for the compliance officer to effectively execute their duties. Organization that ignores the red flag associated with a customer relationship can suffer significant reputational, regulatory and financial consequences. <laughs> Nested accounts are high risk because a correspondent bank should include periodic review of their respondent bank's AML safety framework as part of their AML safety framework. Correspondent bank need to undertake the risk assessment and ensure that their policies and procedures regarding the respondent bank relationship and transactions are adequate to mitigate against identified risk, especially in high risk relationship. Let's understand payable through accounts. In a traditional correspondent relationship, the respondent bank takes order from its customer and passes them on to the correspondent bank. In this case, the respondent bank has the ability to perform some level of oversight prior to executing the transactions. PTA differ from the typical correspondent accounts in that the foreign bank customer have the ability to directly control funds at the correspondent bank. PTA can have a virtually unlimited number of sub-account holder including individuals, commercial businesses, financial companies, exchange houses and even other foreign banks. The services offered to sub-account holder and the term of the PTA are specified in the agreement signed by correspondent and respondent banks. PTA held in the name of respondent bank often involve check encoded with the bank's bank accounts number and numeric code to identify sub account, which is the account of the respondent bank customer sometime. However, the identification of the sub account holder is not given to the correspondent bank. The element of PTA relationship that can threaten a correspondent bank AML CFT defenses including <coughs> PTA with foreign institute licensed in offshore financial service center with weak or underdeveloped bank supervision and licensing laws. PTA arrangement in which the correspondent bank regards the respondent bank as its sole customer and fails to apply its customer due diligence policies and processes to, uh, to the customer of the respondent bank. PT arrangement in which the sub account holder have currency deposit and withdrawal privileges. PTA used in conjunction with the subsidiary representative or other offices of the respondent bank which might enable the respondent bank to offer the same services as a branch without being subject to supervision. Let's understand PTA through case study. Lombard Bank Limited, a bank licensed by South Pacific Island, Vanuatu, opened a corresponding PTA at American Express Bank International in Miami, Florida, AEBI Bank. AEBI permitted the bank to have a multiple on, uh, authorized signatures on the account. Lombard customer had no relationship with AEBI. However, Lombard offered its Central American customer nearly full banking services through its PTA at AEBI Bank. The customer were given checkbooks that allowed them to deposit and withdraw funds from Lombard PTA. This is how the misuse of PTAs work. Lombard's PTA sub-account holder brought cash deposits to the Lombard representative in four Central American countries. Lombard couriers would 
then transport the cash to the bank's Miami affiliated Lombard Credit Corporation for deposit in the PTA at AEBI. Lombard customer also brought cash to the Lombard offices in Miami, which was located in the same building as AEBI. That cash was also deposited in AEBI PTA for two years, ending in June 1993. As much as two million cash, two million dollar cash was received by Lombard Miami affiliate on 104 occasions. AEBI did not know the source of the cash being deposited by Lombard's customer into the PTA. This fact raised significant AML CFT compliance concern related to KYC, due diligence, record keeping and regulatory filing requirements. In 1994, AEBI paid a multi-million dollar fine for its connection to money laundering by, by a Mexican uh, drug cartel. The organized crime group imported a significant volume of Colombian uh, origin into uh, drug into the US and used AEBI PTA to launder the money. The key takeaway from this case are, case are PTA often do not know the source of fund and the customer identities because the PTA can be offered to an unlimited number of sub-account holders, the exposure of correspondent bank to the financial crime is very high. When correspondent banks offer the PTAs, they should set a clear limit on their use depending on the internal policies and the risk profile of the correspondent. Thank you for watching the video. Soon I'll post the next video on part 2. Hope you like the video and content. Namaste.